Hey, it's Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. This is a little bit of an older project, so things might look a little bit different. I think I did it about a year, year and a half ago. This is the Epoxy River Wine Rack, and it's made out of cherry and obviously epoxy. So just getting some of this stuff rough cut to size, and we will get to the fun stuff in just a second. So the first thing I did after rough cutting it is making sure that the edge is straight so I have a little bit of something to reference off of. And so I'm doing that with hand planes and then I take a draw knife and I'm just cleaning off the bark because the bark was not something that I wanted to include in the middle piece here. So this will kind of be the faux live edge, I guess. It's live edge, but no bark. <laughs> And then I kind of repeat most of those steps with the other piece. This time I'm using a metal hand plane because I don't know why. And these are the two roughed out pieces. Pretty rough, but you can see how it'll work. Next thing I did was bring them to the planer. And the first thing that I did actually was I had glued these down with some hot glue and some wedges to a reference board to make sure that the other side was flat when I did these. So that way I could kind of skip plane and then just finish plane those. And then I have my sander with a little uh, foam pad on it to kind of smooth out all of that edge. Things are starting to look a little better. Next up, I dammed a whole bunch of stuff up with glue and tape and whatever, and I poured a little bit of epoxy in the bottom because I was a chicken. <laughs> and I figured if I was going to find a leak in that, I'd rather do it with this much epoxy than a whole bucket full. So that actually went really well. I didn't have any problems with either of those. So mixed up the real batch a couple days later once that first stuff was cured and we are pouring this all in. I think it was Eco Epoxy Flowcast, I think, was the epoxy that I used. And then I used some black diamond pigments. I think it was emerald was the color that I used for this. And one thing that I did learn is that whatever you do when you pour it is not what it's going to look like. So I ended up having to do this same thing a couple oh but probably about a day later i had to come back and re-stir it so that i could get a nicer pattern next thing up was to do a whole bunch of sanding because i needed to obviously sand it down to make sure that that epoxy looked good and then i periodically kind of sprayed it down with some water for for the epoxy just to get some of the dust off and get a little sneak peek and then i also did the same thing to the wood just to make sure i got any dust out of there and then raise the grain so I didn't screw any of that up. Once all of that sanding was done, I came over and made a sled for my table saw. And then obviously I'm cutting that here. So I'm cross cutting that. And that's why I wanted those edges to be straight. So that way I could use those as references for cutting this out. And then flip it over and cut the other side as well. It is equally as exciting, I promise. I have my jigsaw slightly angled, probably didn't really need to do that, but I kind of drew a pencil line sort of following some of the grain. I did want to keep as much of that crotch figure and the one on the left, so I kind of went around it. But this is the starting of the fake live edge on the outside. That way I could have the river down the middle and make it kind of look like live edge on the outside too. And this is where I start to make it look more like Live Edge. So this is just a wire wheel in a grinder and I kind of just attack the edge. No real rhyme or reason, just kind of hitting it all over different directions, trying to get a little bit of a different pattern. And then I hit it with a nylon wheel just to sort of smooth that out a little bit and we'll see what that looks like later. So now the scary thing, <laughs> drilling a bunch of holes in what I just spent a whole bunch of time. So these are eventually going to be for some bolts that go through to mount the wine rack. Originally I was supposed to use screws, but I'm using these little like barrel bolt type things. And these were a little bit bigger, so I had to drill out the wine rack holders or the wine bottle holders themselves. Once that was done, I went and applied all the finish and that was where everything started to look pretty dang good. I really liked the color of the cherry. I usually like cherry. I liked the grain figure on the cherry and I thought that the finish made everything kind of work together really nice. I like the color combination. 
So these are some of those barrel bolt type things I was talking about where it's basically like a saw nut kind of where it's a bolt on one side and a long nut on the other. Some of the holes I had to clear out some of the uh, finish in because they didn't quite fit. So also equally scary. <laughs> so those just slide right in there and then I can use the other side of it. And then I've got, a, I think they're called Z clip or Z brackets for hanging pictures, but this is what will go on the wall. And there you have it. So this is that kind of fake live edge after the wire wheel and all that. I did use a little bit of dark walnut Danish oil on the edges just to kind of darken them up to make them look a little bit more like bark. Not really bark-like, but it actually looks pretty decent in my eye. Yeah, so that is the wine rack, and I appreciate those of you that stuck around and watched this far, and I will catch you in the next one.